and welcome to the StreamZ community call of 8 August 2024. As you see, we are in the middle of the holiday season, so there are not that many maintainers here, uh, not too many people in general, but let's see what we can do today. Uh, I see that someone edit this PR for discussion, but I have no idea who was that and what did they wanted to discuss. Anyone on the call has an idea? If not, then I guess I'm gonna skip that. Does anyone have any other PRs or issues or anything they want to discuss before we move to the proposals? Can anyone hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can hear you. Okay, then at least I know that the call works. So I don't think we have any new proposals since the last call. Uh, so I don't have anything to discuss. Does anyone have anything to discuss about proposals? I don't see Tina on the call, but um, I think she did wanted to, did want to mention the Kafka roller proposal. Just I think she'd addressed a lot of the comments. And so if anyone had reviewed that previously, I guess take another look. Um, but yes, yeah, she's not on the call, so. Okay, let's end it to the agenda. Uh, any other proposals anyone wants to discuss? Okay, then let's have a look at the issue triage. Let's maybe start with the access operator as there's less stuff. Yeah, so this was an issue that was opened by someone in the community asking about allowing the access operator to um, talk to another Kubernetes cluster. So the idea being if you have one cluster that's running your Kafka and then a separate cluster where your applications, your separate Kubernetes cluster for your applications, could it help with basically getting those secrets across? Um, and I thought it was worth triaging it as a community. Um, I personally think it seems like a good idea, but I I have no idea how possible it would be. So I think it would definitely require some investigation on the operator SDK side, because obviously access operators built on top of a framework. So from my point of view, this is the most important feature of the Kafka access operator. Mm -hmm. And if the operator SDK doesn't support it, we should get rid of the operator SDK. <laughs> or pressure them to support so, it. <laughs> so maybe to explain a bit more of my logic here. Uh, if the access operator works only within the single cluster, then I'm not really convinced how much value it really adds. Because if you just want to deal with the namespaces, we can instead work on the multi-namespace user operator and multi-namespace topic operator. And kind of, I think that will deliver really the core of the functionality of what most users will want from the user operator. And that's kind of share the certificates and the user credentials and so on. Uh, but the user and topic operator will never work across multiple clusters, I guess, at least leaving aside the stretch cluster ideas and so on. But you have very important use cases where this access operator in multi-cluster would matter, such as when you are using Mirror Maker, 
then you need to link the two Kafka clusters, possibly or pretty much always apart from some niche use cases in different Kubernetes clusters, right? Because quite often they run in different areas, regions, and so on. And you still need to kind of sync those, authenticate them, and so on. So I think this is where kind of this remote cluster feature in the access operator comes in, where you give it the credentials to kind of access the remote Kubernetes cluster, and then you basically let it sync the the credentials for the users and the information for how to connect and so on from the remote clusters to uh, the cluster where the application is running. So you can, for example, then uh, when you use it with Mirror Maker, tell the access operator to kind of give me the access data for the remote Kafka cluster and then use that to kind of automatically link the clusters. So I, I, it's not like this is needed for the first release, but I, from my point of view, this is really important thing because this is what's not easy to solve by the other tools. If we don't really allow this, then I think the rest of the access operator can't be possibly handled by some other applications or some other solutions as well. Yeah, I think that's fair. I think I would say that I do feel that there is still a gap for the access operator in terms of like within the same Kubernetes cluster, I do still feel like there is a lot of benefit of being able to provide a single place for applications to grab information rather than them having to fetch it from multiple different places. For example, like the bootstrap addresses is in like the Kafka custom resource and things like that. But I agree with you that I think this adds a lot more weight and that a lot of the problems that the Kafka access operator is solving, we could look to solve in other ways through, like you say, with the user operator or other mechanisms. So yeah, I I think that's, um, I agree with you that it, yeah, it's gonna add a, lot, a hell of a lot of value. I think it, for me, like personally, is in terms of working on this, I've got the obviously been working on the certificate stuff in Strimzy, and I suspect that's going to still take me a while. So I personally don't have this, I don't think, on my like near term time frame. Um, so I don't know what we want to do with that, whether we want to put like help wanted, and then, you know, obviously, if somebody gets to it, then or if I can get to it, then I can. But then at least if, if there are other community members who, want to get involved that gives the option or whether we just kind of leave it and then there aren't many issues in the access operator so if people are interested in any in it anyway it's not the same as with the cluster operator where they have to search through hundreds of issues quite yet yeah so i can comment on this like on it like this and yeah if you want we can mark it as help wanted and yeah, either someone picks it up or doesn't pick it up. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I can certainly at least ask the question across um, in the operator SDK channels to see if they put any thought into this at all. I, I don't think, like my observations from the last KubeCons is that stretching things across multiple Kubernetes clusters is more and more common thing. So my take would be that if it's not supported, that should be definitely a feature to consider for them. Yeah, yeah, I'll ask if they've considered it. If not, I could at least raise a, uh, an issue. Yeah. Okay, so that was the Kafka access operator issue triage. Now uh, let's try to triage some of the Streams operators, Jira's, well, we have quite a lot of them. So maybe we should try to make it quick so that we don't get stuck on the first one for the rest of the time. Uh, 
So this one is about user complaining about quota plugin issues. Uh, we asked the user if he's aware of the changes and we didn't got any reply since two weeks. So I would propose to close this. Yeah, and I already I tested the scenario and it worked for me. So if there are no other inputs from the user, I think we can close this. Not a good day for my writing skills. Okay, so let's close it. So another one is about the key store and trust store password being visible through the PS output. We actually don't have PS in the container, so it's not visible in the PS output, but only in the process tree. But mainly this is a duplicate of the 9957 issue. So I would suggest to close that and keep the old issue where we already had some users suggest they might be interested in working on it. Sounds good yeah. to me. I agree. Okay, the next issue is something I opened. It's a bug in uh, the Kafka rebalance assembly operator where there is some work done asynchronously without really waiting for it, which is always something what smells about race conditions and flaky tests and so on. Uh, Paolo looked at it before and he also agrees with it. So I think we can keep this one. Yep. Uh, should we mark it as a good start? I don't think this is necessarily hard to do. We just need to wrap it into a future and call it in the right place. Yeah, let's label it good start and maybe help wanted. Okay. Uh, another issue is uh, a bit similar. The Kafka rebalance assembly operator has a method called reconcile, which has slightly different signature than the reconcile method from the abstract operator class from which it, which it extends. So it doesn't really cause any compile errors, but I think it's quite confusing and it should be renamed to something more reasonable, so I think we should keep this one as well. Yeah. So I don't think we have really any cruise control people on the call, but yeah, I think the exact name can be discussed here before opening the PR. And I guess that's a simple rename, so it can be good start as well. Yes. And the last of the issues I opened is that 
the Kafka rebalance assembly operator class has this weird thing where it creates a patched Kafka rebalance resource where it edits the status, but then it calls only patch for the for the regular resource and not for the status sub resource. So this this status change is completely ignored and it's never propagated to the Kubernetes cluster. So uh, yeah, this can this should be either fixed if the status is really needed, but since nobody ever missed it, it can be probably just deleted. So I think we can keep it as well or. Yeah, let's keep it. And I guess we can mark it as a good start again. Yep. Okay, now it gets a bit more interesting. Uh, as these issues are not so straightforward anymore, I think. Uh, so user here is asking to for the operator to be able to expose Kafka Connect through ingress. And to be honest, I would argue that it should be rejected because the Connect REST API, like there are two different reasons why I think it should be rejected. A, at this point, we have no security on the REST API, so exposing it is pretty dangerous. So we should definitely not expose it before we secure the Connect REST API. But the second is that it's just a REST API. So if you want to expose it, all you need to do is pretty much to just create the ingress resource. And while you can do that easily from the operator, you will need to add ingress resource now. Tomorrow, someone will ask for load balancer. Uh, next week, someone will ask for the gateway API. Then uh, a few weeks later, someone will ask for the OpenShift routes and so on. So suddenly, you will have five or four different code paths there for handling the different ways how to expose things. And all of these, the users can do them on their own, basically by creating a single Kubernetes resource. So I think it's a lot of code with very little value we get out of it. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, in terms of maintainability and other stuff, I guess it doesn't make sense to implement it. I mean, I expect exposing the REST API to be relatively common. So is it something we uh, we document in some way? Or it's like, no, if you want to expose it, here are your options. No, it's not something we do ourselves, but... Uh... Well, the Strimzy way to use the REST API is not to use the REST API. The Strimzy way is to use the Kafka connector resources. So you should... Like the idea of the connector resources is that you should not need to actually use the REST API, which is actually maybe a third reason why to reject it, but. But anyway, it, it's tricky to talk about exposing the API if you can't provide security for it.
it exists part of an EA. So uh, two things like, uh, so yeah, so StreamZ tries to prevent you from, well, not prevent, but you don't require using the REST API. Everything is possible for the, the same results. Uh, that sort of implies, sort of forces us to support any new REST API call that, uh, like the work that is doing with the offsets currently. Uh, and until then, we, basically, you have to use the REST API because StreamZ does not support it. Uh, and the second point is your sentence exposing the API manually is very simple. Like, uh, that's basically what I was aiming at with like, uh, uh, like how very, very, no, is, is this statement, like, do, do we need to, is it simple enough that you don't need to do document, I mean, not say even a paragraph about it in the docs to say like, no, if you want to expose it yourself, no, you can, but it, you're on your own and this is all you, what, you, what you do. <laughs> I can delete the sentence that it's simple if you want, but so I think if you want to run something like Kafka on Kubernetes with an operator or not, you should have some basic knowledge of the Kubernetes environment. Right. And if you have that, then I think you should know how to expose services outside of the cluster. And if you don't know what all the different things are, then uh, yeah, I would say even if you have support for it in the operator, it's pretty hard to deal with that because how will you know whether you should use load balancer or ingress and so on, especially with the things such as ingress or gateway API, it's pretty tricky because you actually need to have it installed. You need to know what the, what the I fully class agree. which should be not, used is and so on. I'm not saying we should do that. I mean, I fully agree that we should not do that. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, we should definitely not do that, but uh, it was just to make it, it seems to be like something that comes up relatively often, people wanting to export this. So like uh, to avoid getting further tickets around this, like do, can we do anything or... Uh, I don't know. Is it common? Well, I feel like in uh, when supporting users or in tickets or in the chat, people are you know, we asking like, oh, oh, get this endpoint or. I I don't know. I'm not completely sure when I saw this last time. To be honest. Okay, maybe yeah, I'm wait. wrong then. I think we often get asked about securing the endpoint. I personally haven't seen that many questions about actually exposing it. Yeah, the securing thing is definitely more common. Okay. Okay. Next issue is about the uh, in the Helm chart. Apparently, the users can right now configure tell the Helm chart to configure the operator to watch two specific namespaces, and also to watch all namespaces. And when they do that, then, uh, yeah, it seems to fail because of duplicate cluster or bindings. So uh, that sounds like definitely something that should be fixed. The user suggests here that if watch any namespace set to true, it should just ignore the watch namespaces list. I guess that sounds 
reasonable. It might be even better to throw an error if both are configured, but to be honest, I'm not sure if the Helm chart supports things like that. But I guess that should be fixed one way or another, or? Yeah, definitely. Uh, should we suggest that the preferred way is to for the Helm chart to fail when it's misconfigured? I think that's better if it's possible or... Yeah, if it's possible, then sure. If not, then we can go with the way how the community user suggested. Whatever. Okay, so help wanted. Yeah, I guess it's and also a good start. Or... I don't know. Okay. I think it's hard to call it good start when we don't have really anyone to help with that because we don't understand help. But uh, yeah, I think the person who opened it volunteered to open a PR, so it might not be needed. Yeah, OK. OK, next issue. So I guess Federico confirmed the issue, so we want to keep this and have it fixed. Yeah. Um, I hate my life. There is some issue already triaged. So it looks like like help wanted. I have no idea if it's a good start. Okay, so uh, yeah, this one is about, so Marco added the feature for using service accounts for authentication, but there are some ways which are not that easy to do there, like the user operator has no support for it and doesn't, doesn't, which makes it hard to manage ACLs or quotas, for example, for these service account users. So I thought it would be good to have 
the user operator support that. One tricky thing is that the service accounts might obviously be in a different namespaces. So it's a bit hard to manage them with the Kafka user resources, because if you have service account with the same name in multiple namespaces, you can't easily deal with that. So I don't, I think it would be useful, but it's not completely simple. So I think we should keep the issue, but maybe it should have a proposal how to do it first. Yeah. Okay, so means triage means proposal should be marked as help wanted if someone wants to look into it. Yeah, let's try it. Okay. Uh, another issue related to the OAuth authentication is that right now there is no easy way when you want to use the service accounts for authentication to configure the TLS certificates for the Kubernetes OAuth server, because they are in a config map and not a secret. So we have to first get them from the config map, then get them from the secret, and then create a secret with them, and then you can use them. Or actually the certificate itself is in the pot already mounted by Kubernetes, but yeah, we do not have any way how to tell the OAuth authentication plugin to just use a specific path without mounting a secret. So I think that's something we need to improve as well. Does it need proposal as well or? I don't, so there was this parallel issue from a user to allow loading the certificates from a config map, which to some extent will is slightly similar. But I would say, yeah, if you, for example, just add a new option to use already mounted certificate or something, it might not need a proposal per se. But if you want to add support for config maps everywhere, then that probably should have some proposal. So I don't know. I maybe. guess we can. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. Maybe we can simply say that if it would be done through config map, it should have a proposal. And if it's somehow loaded automatically from the pod path, then maybe it doesn't need a proposal. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Maybe we can discuss on another community or, call where more maintainers will be present, how we will approach it. You this. want to, you want to postpone it? Okay. Maybe yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so do we want to discuss the other one as we already started it? So yeah. this is kind of, yeah, about allowing to load it from config maps. I don't have a strong opinion on this one. I think it's 
annoying from the maintenance point of view because it's another thing to another part in the code to test everywhere. So I don't know, but maybe if someone wants to contribute it and write a proposal for how the API should look like. Yeah, in case that there is some user which will, would like to contribute that, then fine. But it would actually solve the first issue, as you mentioned. So. Well, not completely because it's talking a bit about different parts, but yeah, in general, it might. Yeah, let's see if there will be some users which would like to write a proposal and contribute it. And Okay. So I guess proposal and I'll font it. Okay. So next thing is something what comes up fairly often, and that's the ability to configure in more detail the different parts of the external certificate subject. So given it appears regularly, then Maybe we should be open to it. And if someone wants to contribute it, we should be open to it, but we probably should have a proposal for this. Yeah, that's what I wanted to mention, that it will need to propose in case that someone would like to add it.
Okay. So something like this. Yep. Okay, it's triage help on the proposal. Okay. Next one is from you, Lukash. Yeah, so uh, as a summary, uh, when we are uh, applying the quotas using the Kafka resource uh, for the Streamzy quotas plugin, we are um, removing or let's say skipping the internal users uh, from the quotas. But for the Kafka default Kafka quotas, it's uh, not possible, at least from what I so uh, in the configuration, we cannot add some excluded principles or something like that. And uh, yeah, I wanted to add some kind of uh, nows values for the quotas for the internal users, but that would clash with the Kafka user operator. And I think that you could mention that it would uh, somehow rewrite it. Uh, so it's not that simple to just exclude it in the code. And uh, yeah, the question is how we should approach this. If we should just document that in case that you will apply the Kafka default Kafka quotas, it will be applied also to the internal users or we would need to somehow handle it in the Kafka user operator and the cluster operator, or what are the other options? Because I don't know if in Kafka it's I, possible to exclude it. Yeah, Sorry. I guess the good start will be to summarize somehow the actual impact it has on different components. Like, yeah. I don't know, I guess user and topic operator might be limited by the, how is it called, the modification count? Yeah, there is, uh, for topic operator, I guess there is some mutation rate or something yeah. which... Might be for user operator as well. I guess cost yeah. control might be impacted by the Fetch produce and, and consume. Produce. Yeah. Yes. So maybe you should first create some summary of what might be the possible impact. Yeah, sure. That would make sense. Yeah. So I will write a summary and we can then continue with the investigation discussion, I guess. Mikael, I assume there's no way in Kafka to say that the default quota doesn't apply to some specific users, right? No, I don't think there's anything like it by default. Yeah, from what I read in the articles and the documentation, they are advising to uh, create another, let's say, quota settings for the user you would like to exclude. And yeah, that would clash with the Kafka user operator, uh, the user operator scenario, as I mentioned. So yeah. I will write a summary and let's see. Okay. I think you uh, do this through a, a custom quota provider. Yeah, this this is covered by the Streams Quotas plugin, but not for the default Kafka Quotas. So there is another option to actually write some custom Quotas plugin, which would just extend the default Kafka Quotas, but I think it's not desired, right? Well, let's see the impact first, and then we can decide, I guess. Yeah. Okay, uh, maybe we could go through one last issue because this has already PR in the making. So I think we just want to remove the triage label. That's some uh, uh, 
scorecard about some best practices and so on. And yeah, then the rest of, rest of the issues for triage are mostly topic operator and cruise control. So maybe we could leave that for next time when we have the experts. Yep. So that leaves the last part about any other business. Does anyone have anything? If not, then I guess that's it for today. Thanks, everyone. So thanks. thanks for joining and see you in two weeks. Thanks. See you. Bye.